This is, yeah, really cool. Uh, Pastor Mary, you see her on the other side of the screen right here. She's been on top of a roof of a building for 10 days now, and you're in Bay City, Michigan. Uh, good to see you. I'm glad the weather's nice right now. It's been nice, although it gets quite hot up here. I Yeah, I can imagine. So for those of who don't know what's going on, give me the very basics about why are you on the roof of a building in, in Bay City, Michigan? Well, it's twofold. Number one, I'm trying to raise some funds for the Great Lakes Stream Center. We are able to help people in need. And I'm also experiencing homelessness in a very minute way. I have the advantage of having all the items that we've handed out to people in need. So I have a couch, I have an umbrella, I have a few basic things because we hand those things out to people that we meet that are leaving the homeless shelter or are in need. But I'm experiencing roughing it up here, no tent, no tarp, out in the rain, and I'm also raising money. That's cool. What so? What is the Great Lakes Dream Center? Either one of you can can talk at the time, and um, yeah. And and have, did you introduce who's next to you? You did. Yeah. So this is my husband, Pastor Aaron Johnson, and we both volunteer here at the Great Lakes Dream Center. I founded it many years ago, and really out of a heart of helping people that were leaving the homeless shelter, and I would see them come back because I've been volunteering at the local Good Samaritan Rescue Mission since 2010. And so I would try to find out what is our community lacking? What are the gaps and why are they coming back? And so I discovered a lot of different things like they would need furniture when they got their new apartment. They'd have a roof over their head, but they'd be laying on the ground. So maybe they'd go to like a rena center to get furniture. They'd get behind on their bills and they'd end up back at the Good Samaritan Rescue Mission. So we would bring them couches. We would bring them beds. I would discover they have a bridge card and they can get their food, but they don't have the money to get the laundry soap or to get diapers for their kids. I discovered a lot of moms didn't have car seats, so we hand out car seats. So the Great Lakes Dream Center really is a faith-based community center. We have the building open in the evenings and throughout the day for a lot of recovery groups, NA, AA. We have family support groups that meet in our building. And then we also have a community worship service Sunday nights where either I preach, Pastor Aaron will lead worship, and then that way people who are looking for that spiritual help on top of the physical help, they can get it all right here at the Great Lakes Dream Center. So I hear someone beeping. I heard a beep there. Oh um, yeah, we get we get wake up calls. There's the cars, morning. cars driving by every five seconds. There's half a dozen cars coming through here. So, so the Great Lake Dream Center is not necessarily, or correct me if I'm wrong, it's not a a, a place where people can go and stay or no. That is correct. We do not have an um, overnight facility. We try to partnership with everybody in our community. So we have a homeless shelter here in town called the Good Samaritan Rescue Mission. And that's where I started volunteering. And we created the Dream Center to kind of partner along with a lot of the nonprofits in town to be able to help them out. So like Salvation Army does food. So we don't do meals because you can get lunches at the Salvation Army. Um, Safe Harbor Kitchen does handouts of food baskets. So we have emergency food available, but we don't do the big food baskets like they do. We try to offer things that the other nonprofits in our town don't. That's why we do the car seats, we do the diapers, we do the shaving kits, the cleaning kits, the laundry soap. And then we also have that building open for the recovery groups as well. Yeah, because people don't think about that. I actually have a, a friend in, he's in North Carolina. Two weeks, two weeks ago, he had a job, he had a home. Right now, he is literally struggling and on the verge of homelessness because he lost his job. He had a family, horrible family situation, and he's now homeless. So I don't think people realize how close any one person could be to that's, this situation. Yeah, that's exactly the case. So we're finding more and more often, a lot of times people think homelessness, homelessness is something that is a, a period of time that they just fell into or made a lot of bad choices where realistically it's it's one bad situation potentially put somebody in a place where they're not a, a, a family member dies a, a, a house fire uh, you know made a maybe one choice that led to a bunch of things just falling and falling uh, like a dominoes down so you run into this all the time yeah and and a lot of people, a couple of weeks ago, I posted a video of a food pantry up north. There were dozens and dozens of cars in line to pick up food. 
and people were like, oh, they're just taking advantage. They got nice cars. I think people <laughs> who don't understand, there can be not necessarily homeless, but there are people who may you know, have a mortgage. They're about to be kicked out of their house. They have a car payment they can't get out of. I don't like it when people judge other people. And right. do you do you see a lot of that in society that people are quick to judge others and when they really don't know their situation? Oh, we see that all the time. And that's part of the reason why I'm up here on the roof and I'm trying to bring people awareness that every single story is unique. We see some people that um, maybe they do have a really nice car and that was a really bad choice. And now they're stuck in this car payment and they can't afford the basics. Now we think, well, they don't deserve help. Well, who deserves help? Like, how can we decide that? We do have some people that maybe there's an addiction issue or there's a mental health issue, but sometimes it's, they made a move to an area and the landlord decided to sell the property. And in Bay City, what we see is there's not a lot of places to rent. Next thing you know, they're living out of their car or they're couch surfing as they say it. And so if we can be here to kind of help, the number one thing really we do, I know we hand out a lot of things, but we really listen and we try to love and we try to just reach the person where they're at. And that's why the community worship services on Sunday nights are nice for those that are looking for that little bit of a spiritual thing to know, is God mad at me? Am I being punished because um, maybe God doesn't love me? And we try to help the whole person, if that makes sense. But yeah. um, there's so much more to it than what we think. And I'm going to get to your website. Well, let me put it on the screen now. If people are watching and I'll have you say it, but it's on the screen right now and I'll put a link in the video. But what is the best way if someone can't make it out to you, even if they're watching in another state? Because I have a lot of people everywhere because a lot of Michiganders are living in other states now. How can they help you out online? What's the website? So if you go to rooftopsurvivor.org, it's a great way to give. It's a, it's a platform for nonprofits. So we don't have to pay any fees. There's no credit card fees. We get 100% of your money if you use that website. We also have, if you want just information about the Great Lakes Dream Center, we also have a website, greatlakesdreamcenter.org as well. But the platform to give where we get 100% of your money is rooftopsurvivor.org. And, um, you know, some people, we had one woman that messaged us and she said, you know, I'm going through an eviction but you guys have helped me out and my kids so many times I want to give something. And she gave $5 wow. and you know, it's kind of reminds me in the Bible of the widows might, you know, the two mites that she gave. We think that like, well, if I just had one business, get 50,000, I could get off this roof and I could be there for my kids, you know, and some of the events that I've been missing out the last few weeks. But you know, if somebody wants to just give $5 and that's all they have, that's huge. And so every little bit helps. It is amazing. So are you, I'm reading the website. Are you going to stay up there until you get $75,000? I am. I'm not coming down. I did this in November of 2021. And I said I would stay for a minimum of three nights or until I raised $50,000. And it snowed on me. It rained. It was super cold. But within the three nights, I was able to raise $57,000. This time around, we're finding that a lot of the businesses are just going through a hard time. The economy is not where it used to be. And so it's it's just cars driving up with 20 bucks, with five bucks. And so it's coming in a lot slowly. But that doesn't stop my determination that if people are experiencing homelessness in Michigan for weeks and months on end, I can handle a few more days. So I'm going to stay up here until I raise $75,000. doesn't go into our pocket because we don't take a paycheck. Both my husband and I volunteer. All of it goes to keep the doors open so we can have these recovery groups in here. We can have the pantry shelves stocked and we can continue with what we're doing. And right and now, started. let me look, Sorry. you're at th- almost 31,000 right now. So you got a little ways to go, but you're, you're serious. This is in your heart. You're not, you're not coming down until you reach that goal. Nope. I've been up here nine nights now. We had some storms come through. I haven't been down for any reason except for about 45 minutes when we had a lightning storm and my kids were freaking out. My husband literally got a hold of me. He's a lot bigger than me. He put me on the lift, took me underneath the awning. He said, even if you were experiencing homelessness, you would take shelter during a lightning storm. And then as soon as the lightning passed, we came back up on the roof when we sat in the rain for another couple hours until the rain was done. But, and then we pulled out our blankets I'm only surviving on items we hand out to people in need. So he sleeps at night with a sleeping bag. He's staying up here to protect me and make sure I'm okay. But I'm only using the blankets that we hand out to people in need and some of the items that we've handed out. So 
but I've been okay. I've been staying warm enough and we've had only a few nights that were super cold. So what is, what does he think? What does he think of this? <laughs> well, I, I know her determination, her heart for people in the community. And uh, so I know, I know for a fact, the $75,000 goal that she's not coming down until that, that happens. Um, she's very determined. She had a hard time coming down even in the middle of that storm, partly because <laughs> she's afraid of heights. That's actually a, an issue for her. So she doesn't like to get on a lift, but secondly, uh, she just doesn't want people to get the impression, you know, that, that I gave that up, gave up in any way or, or taken advantage of, of anything. So, uh, yeah, I literally had to grab her raincoat and kind of pull her <laughs> over to the, to the wow. lift and take her down. So <laughs> I've had, you know, I'm, I'm smiling right now. It's middle of the day, the sun is shining, but I've had some hard moments yeah. and I, but when I have those hard moments, I think, okay, just because I have a choice to get down doesn't mean that there's not other people that are unhoused that they have to live through that. And honestly, the best conversations I've had are the people that walk up, they say, I'm so sorry. I have nothing to give. I'm homeless right now. And they start crying and they look at me and they say, thank you for going through this. I feel like you can understand now when I talk to you what I'm going through. Um, I've had people come up to me and say, you know how cold it was last night. And, you know, part of it, obviously, I need to raise money to keep our doors open. Um, the people we help don't have anything. So the people that come each week, they're not able to give. But I know that people care about them and need and they want to give and they want to help support us. But also when they come in and say, I need to talk to somebody, um, even though Pastor Aaron's experiencing it with me in a different way, because he's able to go down, he's able to go home and take a shower. He's had to do some home visits and, and help the community go to the, go to the homeless shelter, do chapel services and while I'm stuck up here, you know, I'm staying up here till I raise that money. But what really is we're, we're able to be more compassionate now and to be able to really talk to those when we're at the jails, we volunteer at the jails as well. Or when we're at the mission to say, we understand how hard it can be. And when they say, look, I just need, um, you know, some, garbage bags because my things are getting wet. I understand now why garbage bags are so important. And I know that sounds silly, but when you can relate oh. to somebody, you can help them in a greater way. And part of the extra time up here, Chris, we're, we're a little bit kind of bummed with how slow things were going. But in the same respect, a lot of it has been people coming and sharing their story and being heard. And I think that's just as important as the money that we are raising people want to, to know I want people, us to know what we're doing uh, just reflects what they've experienced and that, that yeah. it's difficult. Let me and ask you, and I won't ask you to get political, but I just want to ask um, the president. Others are saying the economy's in a good place. There was an article today by Axios, which is some national publication, says there is no recession and the economy <laughs> is in good shape. It's not for everybody, though, is it? No, it's it's not. We're seeing the numbers up in so many places. I, I talk with a lot of the different um, nonprofit leaders. They're seeing high numbers of people coming in looking for food. I talked with um, other nonprofit leaders that are also fundraising during this time for events that are coming up. And they said businesses aren't able to give what they used to give. I know that's what we've seen. I, I've had business owners personally reach out to me and they say, you know, Pastor Mary, we know you've been doing work for almost 15 years here in Bay City. We love what you're doing. We just don't have the money to give. And so that's why, you know, it's more everyday people just giving five bucks. They can maybe afford five bucks and that adds up. But yeah. the economy is not what it was two years ago or three years. You know, it's it's different right now. I, I see it. Now, there's that's, people that have jobs, but that's not, still not cutting it for what they need. Like it's it not. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah the over the last, since you've been in this world. Is this, is this some of the tougher times you've seen in, in, in your world of, you know, raising money and, and doing and fundraising and so forth? And is this some of the toughest you've seen? I would say this year is probably our hardest year. And that's why I'm up here. I don't want to get up on the roof every year. I did back in 21 to raise some awareness. And um, this last calendar year, the amount of money we had coming in just from our regular donors was down so much that the board actually one point was talking about, do we close our doors? Oh. And I'm like, we help so many people, even those in the recovery world. I had an interview with one of the ladies and she was like the number one resource for people that are in recovery, the moms, the car seats, diapers, everybody comes to the dream center. If you guys close your doors, what are the people going to do in Bay city? Yeah. And so I was like, I'm going to get up on the roof and I'm not going to come down. I've got to have that base mount in there to keep our doors open for the next year. 
So because the economy was bad leading up to this point, and now I'm seeing it even with the giving here, that's why we have to do something extreme. What is your address? Where, where What's the address of the building? So we're at 700 Lafayette in Bay City, Michigan. Okay. Can people stop by and not climb the roof and donate? <laughs> I prefer strangers not come up here. I might be a little wary of that, but exactly. there is a donation box out front. Um, there is. So they have to come and make a donation directly here or they can go online. Okay. And the online is good. And I'm, let me bring that up again right here. One more time. The donation website is? Rooftopsurvivor.org. Okay. And I encourage anybody, like you said, if there's anyone watching right now, or I've had instances where a little kid wants to donate three bucks from their piggy bank or whatever to help. It, it, you're saying it doesn't matter if someone donates a dollar. It's all for the yeah. greater good. And, and we have we've had people who are literally pulling the last bit of coin out of their pocket and dropping quarters in there, and saying that's basically all they had, but they're wanting to be able to contribute. So I've had people come up that say, I don't have any extra money right now, but here's some peanut butter and jelly uh -huh. and literally leave the food they have. And then not even 30 minutes later, I have somebody pull in saying, you know, my kids are hungry. I can't get to the next food giveaway until tomorrow afternoon. And I said, I've got peanut butter and jelly, you know, and we were <laughs> able to give them that. So God always provides what people need and people are bringing what they have. And it's a place of hope where the next person that comes in, we're able to help them with it. So and the last thing, the good thing is you are local. They know where the money's going. 20% is not going to some whatever. It's going local. It's not going to New York or Chicago. It's helping locally. Exactly. Every penny stays here and it goes to just keeping the building open. We have only one part-time person that makes sure the books and everything is, is settled and make sure the volunteers are scheduled but everybody else is volunteer, including us. We, we are volunteers and um, we keep the pantry stocked as best we can with what we have. And we get car seats for the moms and help as much as we can. And, and truly that's our heart and everybody who volunteers here, that's their heart as well. Well, thank you. And I, I might make my way up there soon. Hope the next couple of days, maybe I'll come and see you, but I'll give you a warning. I don't want to startle you. <laughs> that would be nice. We'll, we'll get you up on the rooftop. You can join us on the couch here. Okay, cool. Um, okay, I will be putting this out. Just once again, thank you so much and, and keep updated with me how it's going. Oh, we sure will. will. Thank you.